with our food service providers. And part of the problem is that we have no food hub, we have no place for, you know, institutions can't have 12 trucks coming to deliver different products. It's not logical. Um, so I was wondering if um, there are any plans, and we also need certified, we need certified food. So I believe this is to Blue. I'm, I'm, wanting, I'm, I'm wanting to ask you and to push you to get your certification so we can utilize your foods because we are we are mostly public schools and we can't, you know. Also, you know, lots of schools, you know, my school tomorrow, just because I'm going to brag, tomorrow my local school district is <coughs> its first composting pickup for all four elementary schools, which will be composting the food waste, which has been a long time.
says this is what we're going to grow, and they all have it at the same time. And uh, there are, you know, there are obviously seasonal vegetables, and there are things that um, are hardier and it's easier to grow. And so I think that's what they gravitate towards. But um, it's unique things that I think that I look for that no one else has because I've got six farmers coming to me and saying we've got tomatoes, we've got, you know, we got chard. And then you have to sort of parcel it out, and, and uh, it becomes a little bit of a challenge. Uh, and then you also have uh, chard in the menu for you know the entire summer. Um, so you know if there's something just unique that you like and uh, that you think will be fun to grow, I'm sure we can throw it in a burrito. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> we grow the best pot choy in the ice cream. Thank you. That's interesting. Um, Randy, how you do? Hello folks, my name is Roger Meyer, and uh, I'm producing an event called Hudson Rising, in conjunction with Clearwater. And the event, I want to tell you about because I'm going to ask everyone if you can give us some suggestions as we're partners with the event. Essentially what we're doing is taking Clearwater Festival thing on the road. And one of the reasons uh, why um, Westchester was identified as the place to go is because of the Clearwater Festival. And it sort of exemplifies that economic development picture of, of drawing from our local ag our natural assets. There, we, we decided to create a, a giant flotilla called Hudson Rising. It's a spectacular New York State signature event in which tall ships would go down the Hudson River, stop at our cities, bring all local food into the cities, and basically be a big celebration of what's, of what's truly New York. And we're already working with Island of New York, we've got funding for it, we're safe, and we're getting a lot of energy, so we're trying to make this the phenomenal event to some extent, to capture our sustainability project. So I, I reach out to everyone here, if you have any ideas, any, any partnerships we're we'll bringing in, everyone from the farms to, to beverage manufacturers, hospitality. Let's make this a tourism vehicle. We're going to promote this worldwide. So we need as much good ideas and support as possible. So, thank you. I know you raised your hand for a while. This is this a woman back here? Yeah. We have time one more question. Hi, I'm Deb Malone. I'm the Executive Director of Hudson Valley Aging Chamber of Commerce, located at the end of Westchester and Peace uh, And the part of the Governor's State of the State Address this year, he made a proposal of uh, creating duty-free stores in New York State or locally grown products and locally built products. How are we working with that initiative? What's happening with that? Because certainly that might bring the cost of foods down and their Duty-free? Can anyone comment on this? The, the um, I um, asked the, the same question as soon as the words really came out of his mouth. The particulars of the initiatives are still being worked out. Um, so, you know, my guess um, and what I've heard is that in the next probably 90 to 120 days, we'll start to see um, in something form that people can wrap their arms around it and see how it applies potentially to, to benefit their businesses. So we'll stay tuned for that. Um, sure, Danny, uh, Jerry, I'm sorry. Uh, I know, just ignore Jerry, real quick. Yeah, real quick. Scott, do yeah. you have on your website with those 200 plus forms in the local area? Or is there a way that you can find out where they are? If there's a resource, actually, I know Lou went through, she didn't mention, but I know she's working on it as a farm trail. Um, but I think there are other resources that pull together the local farms. I think there are even itineraries and things that are available in the touch. I'm not sure if it's There's some on uh, Hudson Valley Tourism, okay. and as well as our partner for uh, the Valley Tea, which has somebody who has a comprehensive lesson. There's, there's, well. there's also, there's also uh, a program that's coming out called Hudson County Bounty. And the unfortunate Westchester's not listed on that, even though we're part of it. Um, so that they're working that out. But part of that is also the listing of farms on that website. And we actually have on our website other, basically Westchester farms, listed on our website. Uh, and I looked at it this morning. We're actually missing several of those local farms. And part of that is because, like, like far away farm with Lena and Steve. It's a small farm, and it's not open to the public except by, by invitation on certain dates. So we have to be mindful of how we list certain folks. Mm -hmm. uh, another thought that we have in the future for tourism is to have a, uh, an event where 
Uh, because a lot of these small farms are small and they can't handle the masses of people, for folks to come up to our farm uh, park, and then we would have a small tour bus that could take them to individual farms so they can sample cheeses, buy cheeses, uh, buy, they have a fiber farm with alpacas, uh, <coughs> and maybe end up at our farm at the end of the day, and we could work with someone like David, we could do a farm to table dinner at the end of the day. Um, so that's what we're looking to do in some of our outreach. That's so, right. It reminds me of the wine trails and the pottery trails and the different things that this right. city right. offers. Right. But Jerry, we'll send you the links, and I want to be mindful of everyone's time, so I think we're going to wrap up. Um, any questions that weren't answered, please find them after the event, um, and I will provide you with your information. You don't get a hold of them. Um, just a reminder, this will be this, this event has been recorded. We're going to make it available on our website in a couple of days, so check back. You can watch the whole video.